Total burn time is 40 seconds. Okay, I'm ready. Back to 99, proceed. Good going. We're burning, John. We're burning. There it is. No peace till we copy. It's the gimbal light. Forget about it, babe. Got an engine gimbal light, but everything's good. Still burning. 149 to go. Okay, throttle it up. 127 to go. How's the attitude? 107 to go. 86 to go. 40 to go. Way to go. Step down. Okay, Connors, 1.5 feet per second. Let me know it out. Let's go to Ag's attitude hole. Ag's attitude hole. As we mentioned before, that's a throttleable engine. Goes all the way from about a thousand to nine thousand pounds of thrust. Yeah, mid dead band. That's good. Let it go right there. That's good. That's got it, babe. That's got it. Let me get those. Plus two, minus point, plus point two, minus point five, and minus point nine. The burn's good, John. Roger, I understand the burn's good. And Stu Peterson, we copy your residuals, over. The burn went just as planned, yeah. apparently. They called it good. Real yeah, good, so the burn was steady. We had the decent party light on fire, we had the engine gimbal light on, the master warning, and all those good things, then we just pressed that right on, over. Right, we got her, her 82, enter. Okay, Connie, okay, Houston, we're in a 190.8 by 11.8. Roger, we copy. Okay, we're in a 190.8 by 11.8. Those are the nautical miles okay, of this new orbit. Okay, your engine arm off. Stop quantity off. 190.8 by 11.8. Okay, you can move. Let me take my helmet and gloves off. It was uh, scheduled to be... Uh, Snoop Houston, we missed the verb, 40, uh, the verb 79. 195 by 9.2. So they will not go quite as far out okay, we got it. Thanks, as Tom. had been uh, planned. And they will come in a little bit higher than hey, planned. Hey, uh, Snoop, uh, Houston, the comm is uh, really great, and we got all our data now. During the good part, though, uh, boy, you were way down in the mud, but uh, everything is uh, copacetic now. Over. Charlie, Charlie, I fought with the SBN antenna to get it for you, but I, I, the best I could do, and I got your strongest strength on me when we were down there, and then after we passed, I gave SBN another try, and we came in good, because I thought you'd want to see the burn. We we appreciate it. Thanks a bunch, uh, Snoop. It looks great. Those nautical miles. And uh, Houston, this is Snoopy. You'd like to know that we've taken so many pictures that both cameras have failed on us. Over. Roger, we copy. Both cameras have failed. So presumably we will not get pictures of that pass over the uh, low point nor on the second pass. They have two cameras aboard, but uh, according to Tom Stafford, that's sad news that both failed. As they passed uh, there low over the moon and reported back to us what they saw, this was not just a Cook's tour uh, of the surface. It was important that they report what they saw in case a disaster overtook them. At least they would have that report on the ground. Uh, and the needles, uh that uh, exact quote a moment ago was we've taken so many pictures that both cameras have failed so maybe they got something before uh, the failure However, they reported the failure of one of the cameras that we know before they reached the low point. So it's uh, questionable what they did get. Maybe presumptuous, however, to uh, to uh, say that they got none. Okay, uh, how 
about RCS? What do we got quantity-wise? The uh, actual orbit by statute miles that they have achieved now with this burn, according to the first reading on the computers, is 13 and a half miles at the low point, 227 miles at the high point. So when they come around this time, they will be 13 and a half miles high. They now still have 32 minutes before loss of signal. We expect to hear some more from them on this pass. CBS News color coverage of the flight of Apollo 10 will continue in a moment. Well, despite the excitement of these flights and all of the heavy work schedule that the astronauts have aboard, uh, they do have to eat and they do have to sleep. And while we're waiting for further transmissions of interest from the spacecraft, and right now they're busy uh, with technical data, if they begin to describe what they saw again, we'll come right back, of course. But meanwhile, Nelson Button and Scott McLeod at Grumman Aircraft can perhaps tell us something about the meal time, which will come shortly for the astronauts. Uh, Walter, we, uh, with our own uh, mock-up flight plan, Scott McLeod is the cook on this flight. And uh, we're using a few non-space rated items, but the food is uh, rated for space. And we have sort of bypassed the main course. We're going on to dessert, which is chocolate pudding. Scott, you take it from there, because uh, you're the chef. Oh, oh very well. Uh, this is the water gun that's used, Walter. This is what they'll be carrying in the spacecraft. This, although you wouldn't believe it, is chocolate pudding in this pouch. And the technique that's followed is that the top is cut off of the envelope that holds the chocolate pudding. The gun is then inserted in the top. And I'm afraid I'll squirt Nelson if I squirt it here. <laughs> okay, but the proper it. amount for the pudding would be about four ounces of water. I'll give it a try. <laughs> That's what I thought. Back to you, Walter. <laughs> <laughs> you know... You know, I remember I did that once in Mercury. Some, and people still write me about it every once in a while. During the Mercury program, I tried to play with some space food. I couldn't get the packages open or any part of it done, and I was in bare hands, not in gloves. I don't know how they manage in space. They're doing better, of course, all the time. And I think that uh, Arthur Clark can sort of confirm this for me. As more that we're out in space, the more men become acclimated, if they ever can, to space flight, the more we find that some of the bugaboos disappear in space. And for instance, food. They thought they were always going to have to go for the little bite-sized pieces so that the bits wouldn't fly around. And because of the lack of gravity, they'd have to eat out of those tubes. Uh, they, they wouldn't be able to handle a fork or a spoon. And now they found that, uh, that there's just enough uh, uh, kind of, a, I don't know what it is, residual gravity or something, I don't know what you'd call it, but they, they put the food in aspic now, and now they're having one meal a day with a spoon. But if you have the food sticky so that it's, it coheres and then the bits, the crumbs don't drift away, then you can handle it even in zero gravity. But of course, when we start commercial space flight, we will, we will have gravity on our uh, spacecraft because we'll set them spinning so it'll produce enough centrifugal force so things will stay in the same place. And then we've got to drink from glasses perfectly normally. And, uh, and according to that uh, movie you wrote, 2001, we'll have little uh, treads on our shoes so that uh, we stay yeah. firmly on the platform at all times. Uh, well, I, I hope it will be that way, and I hope it comes quickly enough for me to enjoy it. CBS News color coverage of the flight of Apollo 10 will continue in a moment. 